Hi, I'm Nancy. I've been training dogs for 40 plus years. And back in the day when I first started, dog training was all about respect. And we hauled them around on a choke chain. That's what everybody did. And I did it too, because that was the norm. Over the years, I have looked at, tried various different ways to train your dog. Almost all of them work because you're consistent with it. If you're consistent with just about any kind of training, it will work. That includes prong collars. That includes slip leads. That includes um, e-collars. And um, e -co uh, e an e-collar is like giving the dog a poke. It vibrates on their neck and it gives them a poke and, they, and it's just like having a long um, a long stick and giving them a poke with it uh, or and of course there's the shock collars which um, they people do shock their dogs which I think is wrong uh, I am totally against pain of any kind and uh, and also you know uh, choke chains uh, hurt the dog and uh, prongs can hurt the dog they can uh, cause some severe trachea problems especially if they're um, put on incorrectly and so with the choke chains the choke chain has to be put on correctly for it to work properly and um, a lot of people don't understand that so in my training for years first of all I started off with choke chains then I found that I was spending, uh, in class, I was spending one or two days or two, one or two sessions t teaching people how to use a choke chain correctly. Well, that's counterproductive. And a lot of people didn't want to put a choke chain on their dog. So um, then I went to flat collars. And then I found that people were jerking their dogs around on a flat collar too, which is no good. The, the collar and the leash should only be there for safety purposes, just to stop your dog running away uh, and getting into trouble. If you haven't done your job correctly and have the dog paying attention to you, then you need a safety. And the safety is the leash. Now, what happens with most dogs is there they come into the house and people love them there's nothing wrong with loving your dog i kiss and hug my dog all the time he sits on my lap and he puts his nose up to mine gives me a kiss gives me a hug and uh it's wonderful but he was not allowed to be free until he could prove himself that he was reliable so as a puppy he was never allowed out of the house at any time without a leash or a long line on him. Never, not once, so that I always had control. Now, it only took for him to be about seven or eight months old uh, after having this long line on him 100% of the time that he became very obedient and then I could uh, take the line off him and he hasn't had a leash on uh, since he was about 10 months old. He does have a leash on um, if we're in a, a busy area or in a, in a new environment uh, just because it's safety. And of course there are leash laws as well. So if we're in an area that uh, requires your dog to be on a leash, of course he's on a leash. But he's learned to walk nicely beside me, or uh, actually, I trained him to walk a little bit ahead of me, but on a loose line. Um, that's the way I like to walk my dog. But uh, he doesn't have to be right beside me. And he's allowed to sniff. He goes to the side to sniff um, tree or rock or whatever. But he, as I'm walking, I walk past him. And then as the leash tightens a little bit, he knows that he has to come along and he leaves whatever he's smelling and uh, comes along after me. So every kind of training works. You have to be consistent. But why not use the training that is the most humane? If you build a relationship with your dog from the beginning, even if you have a dog that comes into your household that's a little bit older, 
let's say you rescued a dog or adopted one from the SPCA or one of the rescue societies. This dog is usually older, usually comes with um, some problems, which is why it's at the rescue usually. And um, But if it comes into your house, you decide instantly what the rules are. The rules must be the same at all times. Is your dog allowed on the bed? If it's allowed on the bed, fine, there's nothing wrong with it. If it's not allowed on the bed, then it's never allowed on the bed. Personally, I don't like my dogs on the bed because I cannot stand grit in the bed. It drives me insane if there's a little bit of sand or anything in the bed. So um, I don't have my dogs on the bed. But they have a very comfortable bed of their own in the same room. And uh, that's fine. It doesn't matter. Is your dog allowed on the couch? Now, I put a blanket on the couch and my dog is allowed on the couch and he can sit beside me um, or he can sit on the floor. It's, it's his choice. But uh, the, the, that's the rules. The rules are he's not allowed in bed. He's never, after the first couple of times, when I told him he's not allowed on the bed, then he never, ever tries again. And it's the same with something like barking. I had a rescue dog one time who uh, barked at everything. Uh, she was also, she had a number of different problems. One of the things is she was car sick. Both ends, as you can imagine, that was pretty awful. It took about six weeks of training to get her over the car sickness. And then when she finally got herself up off the floor and was feeling a little bit better, she looked out the window and saw this great big truck coming, great big 18 wheeler truck coming down the road um, on the other side of the road at us. And she just went a little woof like that, just, just a tiny, tiny woof. Then that's when I let into her and I, I pulled over to the side and I stopped and I scolded her loudly uh, along the lines of, you're not going to bark in this car. I'm not having a dog that barks in my ear, blah, 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 blah. blah. And she, um, her ears went down, her head went down. I didn't physically touch her. I just scolded her with my voice. But she never, ever barked at a car, uh, barked when she was in the car again. Never. And that's what you have to do. You have to, if you, if you want to train your dog, the very first time something happens, then you deal with it the very first time. So your little puppy growls at something. And you go, oh, isn't that cute? Oh, look, he thinks he's so brave. He's growling. It's a... No, you deal with it. Deal with it. You, um, you know, you tell the puppy there's nothing to be afraid of and don't be so silly. It depends on what it is, of course. But uh, that's what you do. And you don't allow your, your dog to growl at other people, even if they're little. A lot of people think it's real cute to have a little chihuahua that, or a little Yorkshire that thinks it's brave and, and is growling at somebody and then, then of course the growling goes to snapping and I don't care how little the dog is those teeth hurt so don't let uh, don't let every let your dog do that that's not appropriate now if you don't know how to do this sort of stuff and, and I've learned this stuff over 40 plus years so you um, you know get a professional trainer and help you help you do this it can it can be daunting because you don't know what to do but once you get the dog paying attention to you and wanting to please you dogs are very like two-year-olds and three-year-olds emotionally they never really grow up i think that's why we love them so much because they're like little children all the time they they run you know they run to you and love you and they're and they're unconditional love just like a little child and i think that's why they worm their way into our hearts so well well with a two-year-old you don't let them get away with anything you really don't because a lot of stuff is dangerous you know uh they want to come and uh you know pull a pot off the stove because you're you're up there and you're dealing with cooking something and they reach their hand up and want to pull the pot over on, on top of them well you don't let them do that no of course not it's the same with with dogs, you don't let them do what you um, 
you know, anything dangerous and or or something that can work into being something uh, embarrassing for you. Barking. There's another. I just told you about barking. The first time they do it, you do something about it because the barking will only get worse. Pulling on the leash. Do something about it the very first time it happens. Jumping up. Do something about it the very first time it happens. Now, if you're coming to this and these are problems you already have, get a trainer because obviously what you've been doing hasn't worked. And one of the things about dog training is dogs are very literal. They don't, they don't um, generalize very well. Now, if you're doing the same thing and it's not working, whatever you're doing to uh, rectify the behavior, then change what you do. Do something different. You'll certainly get a different result. Might not be the one that you want, but it'll be different. So um, this is what you, you do. Change the way you behave and the dog will change around you. I mean, it, it's, uh, it's just common sense. And the other thing is make the dog earn the privilege of being in the rest of the house. When you bring a dog into the house, whether it's a puppy or an older dog, confine it. Confine it. Usually the best place is the kitchen because if there's an accident, then uh, the floor is uh, easily cleaned up. And the kitchen is somewhere where you spend a lot of time anyway, so you can interact with the dog. But until they prove themselves that they're, they're not going to be chewers, they're not going to be peeing and pooping, um, you know, and, and not going to be jumping all over you, things like that. Until they prove that, they're, that, that they can be um, left in the other, in, put in the other side of the house, then that's what you do. How many people let their puppies go into the house and then they find out that they peed and pooped underneath the bed? Or down in the basement so um, and then they have to rectify it it's much harder to rectify a problem than it is to stop it before it starts so before you get a dog or even if you have one now write down a list of how what the things that your dog would you would like your dog to be do you want it to bark at things I did teach my dog to bark when somebody came to the door or in the driveway because I wanted to know when somebody was there. If I was in another part of the house and didn't hear someone come into the driveway, I wanted to know. So I taught him to bark. That's pretty much the only time he does bark uh, because I've also taught him that he's not to bark at uh, other dogs walking along the street. Other dogs bark at him. He just looks at them. And uh, he's quite he's quite calm around it, but that's because I've taught him he's not to uh, you know bark back at them. And uh, this is what you do, uh, and you can have a wonderful wonderful dog. And it doesn't matter whether you get a puppy or whether you got an older dog. The rule is as soon as they come into the house, you start training them, one way or another, right? Don't let them have the, the full reign of the house until they prove that they're reliable and trustworthy and, and gradually, and you never, ever, even with an older dog, let them off a long line until they will come when they're called under all circumstances. I don't know how many times I've been out walking my dog and here is another dog galloping towards me and the owners in the distance shouting, it's okay, he's friendly. Yeah, well, that's okay with my dog because my dog is friendly and there won't be anything. But what would happen if my dog wasn't friendly as, and attacked your dog? That wouldn't be good. So it doesn't matter whether your dog's friendly or not. Keep them on. If you can't call them back when they see another dog or a rabbit or a squirrel, then keep them on a line or get a trainer. I've done many dogs that chase squirrels and now they don't, they can walk through a park with, with squirrels and they pay attention to their owner. 
Same with reactive dogs, reactive to uh, other dogs, other people. Train many, many dogs like that. It's um, reactivity takes a little bit longer than just like, you know, walking and, and sit down and stay, but it can be done with, with all positive. And I, this is why I'm, um, I'm really a positive person. And uh, the only thing I do recommend is that you build your trust with your dog and trust and respect. It goes both ways. You trust and respect your dog too. And they trust and respect you. And the love is there naturally. Then when they decide to do something that's not appropriate, you can just scold them with a little bit of disgust in your voice. And um, I had a do uh, I, I've had many dogs, but one particular one was um, I was a rescue. She was quite um, thin when I got her and she had been starved. So um, her big thing was food and any food, anything vaguely edible, she would eat. Uh, she ate a bottle of baby oil one time and I wasn't watching her and um, ate a pound of butter. Um, all these nice things. Anyway, um, she really liked to check out the garbage. Um, and I would see her get up and walk towards the kitchen. And then I would say to her, don't even think about it. And she would go <gasps> like, like I caught her at it and then she'd turn around and come back, right? So this is, that's the kind of scold you do. You don't have to be physically abusive, just a little bit of a scold. Don't even think about it. That's not appropriate. And if you say it in the right tone of voice, the dog will want to please you and then and um, come back. And what, the, what you need to do uh, when you scold them is that you immediately give them something that they know how to do and uh, like come here, lie down, sit, something very easy and then you praise immediately. You go, oh, what a good dog, good dog. So they want that praise very much. They want your praise and as time goes on the dog will work just for praise. That's what my dogs all do. They've all done that over the years. It's just work for praise. They want to be told that they're good dogs. Uh, you start off with, uh, you know, marking it with food or toys or whatever things that they like. Tugs, playtime, whatever it is, or sniffing. Uh, I mean, there's lots of different <clears throat> rewards that they can have. But the biggest reward is approval from their owner. Only after you've built the respect and the trust. So if you want to learn of all about me and my training methods, I train on the whole off leash or with a long line because um, the long lines there just, just for safety. So if you want to learn how to train your dog off leash, contact me and I'll be happy to let you know. Bye.